do the order of the Old Testament books prove a pre-tribulation rapture? Yes, they actually do. If you look at the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, those books, the way that they're laid out, actually show you that the rapture is going to happen before the time of Jacob's trouble. Let me show you. Ezra. Okay, the first one there, Ezra, the Jews returned to the land of Israel. That's what the book is about. It's about the Jews returning to the land of Israel. Nehemiah, the Jews rebuild. You see this thing of them rebuilding, okay? Which, of course, that's already happened. Now, what's the next book? Esther. What's the book of Esther about? The king puts away his Gentile wife and takes a Jewish wife. Talk more about that in just a minute or two here. Then you go to Job. After that happens, what's the book of Job about? Job is on the ground for seven days and seven nights. Hmm, like uh, seven years in the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah. And what happened to Job? He loses everything and has to go through all the stuff where Satan is allowed to attack him. And at the end, it's restored, you know? Like a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. They'll lose everything at the beginning, and they go through all this bad stuff. And at the end, it's restored. And we're going to be doing a study here coming up on the book of Job, showing you that it is absolutely lines up with a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's amazing, the tie-ins. We'll talk about that in an upcoming study. But next you have Psalms, the book of Psalms written by King David. So you have the king coming back in the book of Psalms, like Jesus Christ returning at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. What do you have next? The book of Proverbs. What is Proverbs? It's the wisdom of the king, the king teaching his wisdom to the people. All right, And you can read about that. You can hear my premillennial uh, study on premillennialism. And it talks about going up to Jerusalem and that God will teach them there. The king will teach the people. So you have the wisdom of the king returning. And what's Ecclesiastes about? Ecclesiastes is about the kingdom on its way down. What you have at the end of the millennial kingdom, you have the people starting to get tired of things and, and then Satan's loosed out of the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Or he's in the pit for a thousand years, excuse me. He's loosed for a little season and he goes out and deceives the nations and takes them actually to war against their king. So you actually have the kingdom going down at the end of the millennium there. So, very interesting that the books in your King James Bible are laid out in a pre-tribulation, pre-millennial uh, order. You say, well, okay, what's the big deal? Well, there's some very interesting points there. First of all, if you pick up an Orthodox Jewish Old Testament, they don't believe in the New Testament, at least not yet, but if you pick up an Old Testament Jewish uh, Hebrew Bible, You'll notice that the last book in their Hebrew Bible is Chronicles, Second Chronicles. It's not, you know, Malachi. The order of the books in the original Hebrew don't line up with that. They don't line up with it. You say, well, that's because the King James translators, obviously, were King James only premillennial, pre-tribulational believers, right? No, actually, in point of fact, most of the King James translators were either Puritan or Anglican. Neither one of which believes in the premillennial coming of Jesus Christ. So, uh, who told the translators to put the books in that order? Any guesses? Uh, the Lord? The Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of funny too because people, you know, but, you know, it's, it's supposed to be about the church. The time of Jacob's trouble is supposed to, you know, it's the tribulation, the great tribulation. No, it's the time of Jacob's trouble because it's about the nation of Israel. It's about the Jewish people. I know that's so hard for you to believe if you're a Christian today. Some of these post-trib Christians, they, they just can't imagine God having, you know, giving his attention to anybody but Christians. Uh, well, I hate to tell you this, but uh, God's about done with the Christian church. You see, why did Esther the queen, the Jewish queen, why did she get to become the queen instead of Vashti, the Gentile queen originally? Why did the king put away Vashti? Because she was disobedient. You say, well, the uh, pre-tribulation rapture, bless God, we're going to be so good and so strong that the Lord's just going to take us out of here at some point because we're going to be so wonderful. 
That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that there's apostasy. The church age ends in a very disobedient, bratty bride. The bride is in bad shape. That's why the rapture happens. The rapture is not this, this wonderful, beautiful thing that God bestows and, and just does this nice thing for his bride because she's so holy. No, the rapture actually happens because of apostasy. So you see it lines up perfectly with what happened there in the book of Esther. The Lord takes away his Gentile bride and says, okay, now I'm going to bring back my Jewish bride, the nation of Israel. God starts to deal with the nation of Israel again. See, And when I say that the, the bride is wicked and evil, I don't mean every single Christian. There are Christians today that live the same and have the same beliefs as Christians did 200 years ago, 400 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago. True Bible-believing Christians that are getting the word out, that are believing the Bible that they have. And you say, well, they didn't have the King James Bible a thousand years ago. Yeah, but they had a Bible that came from the true text there, the received text. And whatever they had there, they used it, they believed it. Just like we do today with the King James Bible. See? So, God is going to actually stop this madness that is the church age, and He's going to remove his bride, the Gentile bride, and he's going to bring back the nation of Israel. But they're going to have to be corrected for seven years. And isn't it interesting, too, that the uh, number of books there that line up, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, what do you have? You have seven books. What is the number seven in the Bible? The number of completion. The number of the time of, of the years and the time of Jacob's trouble. See? It all lines up, folks. That's just the way it is. You say, well, I don't know if I can believe that. Well, okay. Deny the plain truths of Scripture. But uh, the fact of the matter is, yes, the Lord's going to be removing His Gentile bride very soon and returning His attention back to the nation of Israel.